or positive charge? Sodium. Sodium gives me a more positive charge on the outside. Do you happen to know what's causing the negative charge inside the cell? In some cases, chlorine, a lot of the times, the negative charge is coming from proteins. Now, when I have this situation where it's more positive on one side, more negative on the other, this generates electricity. This is what is meant by the membrane potential. The cell has the potential to do something. For example, nerve cells would have the potential to pass a nerve transmission. Muscle cells would have the potential to contract. Do, do you see where I'm going with this? When nerves like send the electric signal, doesn't the solution like or like the the solution change like a positive like positive go on the inside and negative yes. on the outside? Now you got a little bit ahead of me, but that's okay. Because, did everybody hear? Okay. When you have this situation where it's negatives, positives, and they're not the same on both sides, okay? For electricity to be generated, they have to swap, okay? And we're going to see how that happens. And then the cell has to come back to what we call a resting state, where they go back to being more negative on the inside, more positive on the outside. Okay, we're going to see how that happens. Now, this membrane, okay, that charge difference is how the cells are going to carry out a lot of their functions. The structure of the plasma membrane becomes important for this to take place. When we begin to look at the structure of the plasma membrane, the plasma membrane, it's going to have something that looks like it like if you were to look at the cell, that would be, for our, our point in time right now, okay? For us, we think of a cell as being circular, okay? Now, because we are animal cells, and animal cells do not have a cell wall, okay? The only thing we have is our plasma membrane. It has a coating around that plasma membrane. The coating that's going to surround the entire cell, all right, is termed a glycocalyx. What do you think of when you hear glyco? Mm -hmm. You hopefully are thinking glucose. In this structure, it's going to have glycolipids. Now, glyco glucose. What structure 
with the glucose molecule. A carbon. Huh? What? C6H. Okay, our C6H12O6. It's a carbon ring. A six pointed carbon ring. Look at my structure right here. If you were to look at what they're determining or what they're recognizing, representing in yellow, those are glucoses. These are chains of glucoses. Remember how I said that it would that the cell would use these glucoses in different ways and one of them was going to be for communication? Now, this is where that comes into play. If we have a glycolipid It tells me that this bilayer that is existing, which has a phosphate head and a lipid tail, that the chain of glucoses are going to be hanging or attached at the area of these tails. Can y'all kind of see that representation? Now, if it's a glyco protein. The proteins that I see being represented here as embedded within these phospholipids, they're showing me one that has a chain of glucoses coming off of it. The purpose of those glucose chains, either from the protein or the tail are for cell communication and cell receptors. This is what they're going to be responsible for. Why would a cell need to be able to communicate? Because tissues function in groups, so like muscles. Because my tissues are going to be made up of cells that are the same. Those cells need to be able to communicate to each other, and they need to be able to communicate to surrounding cells. Why would I need for my cell to have a receptor? What in the world would my cell need to recept? Because it could tell them to stop making a certain protein. Okay. We would need to know, all right, if we think of something like that, um, not necessarily the cell opening but to maybe open that protein so something could get in, all right? We need to make sure that the cell can receive materials it needs because the cell doesn't simply allow everything to pass. Meaning, that phospholipid bilayer. Bi, because it has two layers of phospholipids. Embedded in it are little cholesterols because it helps to give strength. We've got all these different proteins. We've got those glycolipids and all that sort of stuff. We make what is termed a fluid mosaic model. Fluid mosaic. Because if I think about my cell, 
okay? The entire structure around this cell, okay, is going to be this structure. It's going to be this phospholipid bilayer with all of this stuff embedded in it. All right? So, if I think about that, it's fluid because stuff simply floats. Those little proteins and all that sort of stuff, they're constantly in motion, like they're floating. Mosaic, what does that term mean? Piece together, like there's a bunch of stuff that you've put together, okay? The mosaic comes from all of the different pieces that are embedded, mostly proteins. Hmm, okay, let's think about this for a second. have this structure that is a phospholipid bilayer. It's going to be existing so that it has an outside environment and it has an inside environment, inside the cell, okay? So I'm going to have this phospholipid bilayer that's getting created. Now, the heads, which are the phosphate portion, okay, they point towards the water environments because inside my cell, it's going to be high in water. Outside my cell, because it's extracellular fluid, extra meaning outside, okay? Extracellular fluid is high in water. But the lipid tails, the part that are the fats, okay? Do fats like water? No. Okay? So, my portion that doesn't like water points towards the inside. And this structure that I would find all the way around my cell is a perfect structure. Now, the reason for that having that phospholipid bilayer, it is going to control what gets to come inside the cell and what gets to move out of the cell. This phospholipid bilayer is so strong. Have you ever seen um, videos maybe of like in vitro fertilization where they've got the view from the scope of the egg. They take that long needle, they poke the egg to put the sperm in it. Y'all ever seen those? Okay. That needle is breaking through the plasma membrane of the egg. But as soon as they pull that needle out, what does it immediately do? It immediately does this number. Because that phospholipid layer, that is extremely strong. It allows for, it, would, it takes a lot of pressure, okay? A lot of, a lot of uh, stress to actually break that plasma membrane. Now, as soon as it breaks, 
Et la